if you were to put your best educated guess on how long, like, sh should we or could we see Coinbase, Binance, let's just say, let's just throw crypto.com in there or, or Gemini listings, you think it's more likely than not that it happens in the next one year, the next two years? Do you have any gauge as far as that? Sure. I, I would tend to think that we'll be on, you know, talking about top 10 uh, that we're not already on uh, on the coin coin market cap ranks of exchanges. Yeah. Will, will appear maybe even a top five in, in a top five by the end of the Casper fans this video is for you. I am joined in studio with the four brightest minds in the Casper community. We're talking about Wolfie, the lead business development for Casper. We also have Luke, the ambassador to Casper from Australia. We have Chad, the Rue Barbarian joining us as well. And of course, right next to me is Dr. Shy. Uh, one of the co-authors of Ghost Stag Protocol. And today we're going to talk everything about Casper. We're going to give you some alpha. We're going to talk about KRC. We're going to talk about the Casper World Tour. And why is Casper better than Bitcoin? I'm curious to get uh, Shai's take on this. But I want to start with, you know, we briefly spoke off camera. And the gentleman in here mentioned Casper World Tour. And that's kind of where I want to start and I want to throw a question out there. And, you know, Luke, I'll start with you first. We, we know you're the ambassador to Casper in Australia. But when you say Casper World Tour, what exactly do you mean? What's the plan here? Is there a marketing blitz going on? Is there is there money being deployed? Or is this a bootstrap, you know, process? What is going on with the Casper World Tour? And what are you guys looking to do to expand the reach of Casper and, and the, the project? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and yeah, definitely. It's it's something that we're really pushing to get our faces um, out there, get the Casper team in every event that's possible, attend every country, anywhere and everywhere that there is crypto, we want to have Casper there. So, you know, it, it's starting, um, I think the, the kickoff for the world tour, I, I guess I could say was probably Hong Kong. I uh, had an amazingly successful event there. Um, you know, we, we had our CAS fam meetup first ever, uh, over 200 people, I think attended at the, uh, at the event there. And it was just absolutely amazing. It was a sort of felt really grassroots sort of style. You had people there that had heard about Casper for the first time and you had people that were there maybe from day one. And so that was the real, uh, you know, amazing sort of thing. And that's really what we're trying to push to get out to all the different countries around the world. So amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you, Chad, you know, some people might not know this, but you're actually the creator of the Casper logo, right? The logo that you see that backwards K in teal or turquoise, you immediately know it's Casper. Mm -hmm. So you've been, you've been with, with the project for a while. What are some changes you're seeing as far as, uh, user sentiment or community growth uh, as you're going to more of these events and as the Casper World Tour is kicking off? What are some of the big changes you're seeing? And, and on a personal level, what are you looking to do as a marketing director to really get Casper out there in front of millions of people? Yeah, so the initial goal, we're seeing that now. So the goal was to create a community-centric uh, grassroots movement. Um, because we didn't have a massive treasury, we weren't looking for you know, all, we didn't, we just knew we wouldn't have the cash to do like major marketing campaigns, advertising. We wanted to invest in the community. And so we knew that it was going to be us and ambassadors. And so we launched the ambassador program of a fairly early in 2022, 23. And that was the kind of the initial platform that we were going to market. So this is why when Luke said, get our faces out there, we wanted people to meet you know, the Caspa community and, and meet, you know, you're not just connecting to a technology and something that you're investing in, you're actually joining a community. And, and that propelled the growth of uh, the project, propelled, you know, the ambassador program. And so our marketing is really based on investing in our community and getting them out there. And it started with little meetups, yeah, yeah. you know, just, you know, people doing meetups with a banner and 15, 20 people in a room. And, but we knew pretty early on that we wanted to start connecting on a, on a global scale. And that's where the world tour kind of, kind of came to be. And, uh, we've been, I mean, we've been in numerous events and they, this year is, I can't keep up, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're in multiple countries. Um, a lot of it is, you know, <coughs> us few here have been in a lot of events, but in uh, other countries like Warsaw or, or Hong Kong. We had different uh, ambassadors join us from France and Spain. And, Japan. and just to be clear, 
this world tour, you guys visiting all these events and countries, you're not getting paid to do this, correct? You're doing this at your own accord. Yep. And so what that tells to me, who is not on the inside and what these guys are doing is, um, obviously some people do things for money, right? We all need to make money. But when you do something out of sheer love and, and you know, just because you want the project to succeed, I think that says a lot, yeah. not a, just about the project, but about the community. Yeah. Um, and so Wolfie, I, I kind of want to ask you this question, because I know you, you handle all the business development side, but what are, what is your role in this CASPA world tour? Are you fielding a lot of calls as far as exchange listings? I know, you know, we did a video on a potential Binance listing. Um, and we know, let's just get this straight, uh, CASPA does not pay for listings. And so are you starting to field more calls as the volume grows on the CASPA token and more people are onboarding onto the platform, more people are starting to use it? And we'll get into the KRC stuff a little later, but what are some of the things you're seeing? And, and do you have some insight into maybe some of these big listings? Yeah, so so it's pretty funny. Like, um, so I don't have like a big um, like a board like plotting out things in my office or whatever of like who I'm gonna try to find or what's going on. I sort I run more on like instinct, like street street business instinct. Trying to uh, w when I go to uh, conferences and stuff, I have in mind who I'm gonna try to track down, like the larger entities. So any platform or any any exchange or wallet, hardware wallet, software wallet. Any of the household, uh, household brands, like household name brands of crypto, where all the big boys appear, you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Solana, any of that stuff. I, I want Casper to be right up there next to uh, the big guys. You know what I mean? So uh, I have in my mind the, you know, the top tier for all of those categories that I want to go and find them, uh, shake hands. And by now, most of them have heard of Casper. Uh, and then what, what ends up happening there, there's the, the, the ones you really want to meet up with the top shelf. And then there's the medium shelf who you don't mind shaking hands with. And then you get the bottom shelf guys whose business model is, you know, they, they always want some kind of money for listing so that they'll dress up like different titles on fees. Like that. The, so they're like, we charge no listing, but we just need you to uh, give liquidity for market makers, or we just need an airdrop for our, our community, you know? So they have like five different categories where they'll tell you there's no listing fee, but then they want money some other way. Mm. And I have to explain like five different ways of how the answer is still zero. Ooh. Okay, let me, okay. The amount <laughs> that you can actually get is it starts with a Z and it's not a zillion. It's actually zero. <laughs> yeah, not a zillion. Sorry. Like uh, I feel bad for these guys. You know, I've, I've had different jobs and businesses for a long time um, in my life story. So um, you know, guys that are commission based, commission driven, uh, you know, um, you know, workers or whatever, they, they're looking to, to land a whopper, like reel us in the boat, reel in uh Caspa and get a hundred thousand dollars. It's, you know, yeah. commission or something. And it's just not possible with how, how we're set up. The way I see it is, is sure. You know, a lot of these projects and, and you might be watching and you're saying you might see a project just launch. And then all of a sudden you see all these listings. Well, they're paying for those listings. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like, uh, make it and they will come right. Create a, create a great project, a great product, whatever the case may be. And the people will come. And it seems like this is what Casp is doing. Wolfie, I want to ask you, and I, and I know you're not, unless you're a time traveler, uh, I know you don't have the, you might, you might not have the answer to this, but I'm curious if you were to put your best educated guess on how long, like, sh should we or could we see Coinbase, Binance, let's just say, let's just throw Crypto.com in there or, or Gemini listings, you think it's more likely than not that it happens in the next one year, the next two years? Do you have any gauge as far as that? Sure. I, I would tend to think that we'll be on, you know, talking about top 10 uh, that we're not already on uh on the coin coin market cap ranks of exchanges yeah will appear maybe even a top five in, in on a top five by the end of the year i, I would say that's by a pretty safe year. bet yeah okay if you look right now at the top five i, I would say one of them will probably have at least one okay mm -hmm. and uh okay okay it's a little <laughs> info there for you um now now i want to kind of get shy in this conversation and and Shai, you know, you're the co-author of the Ghost Act Protocol. You've worked directly with uh, Jonathan, who is the founder of Caspa. Um, and we have your your buddy Mike, I believe is his name, to thank for that. I know you've told the story plenty of times, so we're not going to ask you about it. But you were kind of hesitant at first to, to, to get involved with the project. And then you had a friend named Mike, if, I, if I'm correct. Right? 
he kind of uh, nudged you a little bit, so to say, right? Or at least what, what we kind of talked about in that interview you did. But what are some ways, you know, because people look at Bitcoin, they say Bitcoin is gold. And then here comes Caspa, proof of work, mining, right? Instead of one block every 10 minutes, one block, block per second, now ten blo getting to 10 blocks per second. And we'll talk about the potential, like how scalable can Caspa really get? But we see a lot of comparisons of Bitcoin, Caspa, but Caspa is a better version. What are some ways that that Caspa on a fundamental level is better than Bitcoin and could potentially do things better and more than what Bitcoin is currently capable of doing? Uh, well, I'll first say that um, Bitcoin is amazing. Bitcoin is uh, one of the greatest milestones, or the first milestone in this entire new world, which uh, behind the economical repercussions is just theoretically very, very interesting, just from a mathematical point of view. It uh, completely changed how we think about what uh, the decentralized system can do. So it came out with this amazing innovation of how you could take this thing called proof of work, uh, which was known before that. It was uh, suggested as an anti-spam protocol by Moni Naor and Cynthia Dvork, and I think as early as 1994. But uh, taking it and using it to, to achieve this new kind of consensus approach, it was an incredible milestone. Um, but as a product, as a technological product, it has a lot of problems. And it's not because the people who implemented it or conceived it were dumb. They were extremely smart, one of, some of the smartest people in history. But they made the same mistake you would make when you do something for the first time. And when you have no idea in advance what sort of scale your system will eventually be aiming for. And we've learned a lot from these mistakes. And we tried to find a way to, to take these ideas and take them a, level, a few levels further. There were some intermediate attempts uh, uh, in between them. But uh, the way I see it, um, I might be biased, um, but I think um, the first checkpoint was Bitcoin, where they came up with this entire new idea and blew everything away. The second checkpoint was Ethereum, um, that they understood that you can take this expressiveness uh, of Bitcoin, this very limited expressiveness, and bust it wide open. And I think the third checkpoint is Caspa. I think it might be, uh, Gosdag might be the third most uh, important protocol from a theoretical standpoint, from a computer science standpoint. Might be a bit presumptuous of me to say, um, and I do, I do remind my bias here, but uh, it seems to me like <coughs> It's uh, the maturation of the ideals that uh, were first sprouted in Bitcoin uh, into something very cohesive, something very aware of all of the problems in the original design. And we incorporated a lot of insights, not just from the world of mathematics and consensus, but we also understood, uh, we took a lot of lessons from um, from economics and from free markets and from usability and what people want and don't want to do with this stuff and how we can take new approaches and insights uh, that were there before us and use them and to create this one thing that uh, meets as many um, criteria as we just can. And uh, I think coming up with this modern, uh, modern solution, but with this old grassroots approach together, allowed us to accomplish something very new, something which is um, takes the ideas of Bitcoin, but removes many of the limitations. And I think the two most important limitations are the, the throughput and the uh, uh, confirmation times, the responsiveness of the network. But all of this, we also found out during uh, the development that the, the structure and the way things work and the high parallelism actually enable a lot of stuff that we didn't expect in terms of fee markets and security budget, in terms of MEV resistance, uh, in terms of just understanding the network better and creating more aware and more powerful protocols. You know, um, a lot of people, and you can look at history, right? Let's take a look at the first online stores in the early 2000s, late 90s. You had pets.com. They were on the right path. It's just it was not the the product that everyone latched onto. And so when you have new technology like cryptocurrency and blockchain, like the internet is not today how it was back in the late 90s. And so a lot of people are saying, look, Bitcoin was the first 
massively adopted cryptocurrency blockchain doesn't mean it's going to be the best or the biggest one as projects like Caspa, right? People like yourselves see what, what the foundation that's been laid and see the flaws of it, right? You're able to take a look at it from a point of view of a step back point of view of, hey, this thing has been around for two, three years. What are the things it's good at? What are the things it's not good at? <clears throat> and new products and services are built, taking that information and making them better. And it seems like that is what Casper is doing. But you brought up, you brought up the security budget. And I know this is a question you get a lot. It's a question we see a lot. Is <laughs> and even in Bitcoin, hey, when the block rewards are gone, how are miners going to be incentivized? And for the the answer to the Bitcoin one is well, transaction fees, right? But we know that fees on Caspa are extremely cheap. So how is Caspa going to remain secure as the block rewards diminish to eventually zero and the transaction fees are still extremely low? Uh, okay, so uh, there are a few things I'd like to unpack here. First of all, you said that Bitcoin is the first massively adopted uh, network. And uh, I might get, get some flack for this, but Bitcoin is not massively adopted. The crypto world is not massively adopted, and given how long it's been existed, uh, I'm very disappointed by how little adopted it actually is. Really? Uh, yeah, the crypto, pe people from within the crypto sphere think of crypto as something huge. It's not huge, it's tiny. And a lot of opportunities to bring in and really massive adoption were missed because the technology got popular before it got mature. Mm. And I think some of the problem is this ossification. and. Uh, Bitcoin is in a tight spot because they can't forego the ossification. It's completely fine that they want to remain with the original protocol. There are good reasons for that, but it's a, a strong limitation of Bitcoin. Even if you believe this is the right thing for Bitcoin, and I don't have a strong opinion in the way, to be honest, um, you still have to understand that even if ossification is correct, being forced to ossify your protocol so early, so prematurely by the forces of the market is a huge limitation and hindrance and the entire industry paid for this limitation in terms of a very, very low adoption. And you think a trillion dollars is a lot of money, but then you're talking in, in terms of global economical adoption, a trillion dollar is nothing. Yeah. The, the industry is tiny. And if you reel in true adoption, then the market cap of Bitcoin is negligibly small. You, you have to be aware of that. Um, the other thing you asked me about is the security budget. Security budget yeah. So I would say that the fees are tiny right now because there isn't a lot of usage of the network. And I don't think it's, it's a criticism. It's like uh, saying that you, the road you're building sucks because it doesn't have any cars. But of course it doesn't have any cars because it's not yet ready. For, for mass use. Uh, we, we are right now still in the process of creating uh, this better type of road to, to have uh, cars going on. And when uh, adoption will come, then the fees will increase, uh, increase uh, accordingly. Now, there are a lot of problems about fees that people think are inherent to um, proof of work, but they are not. They are uh, essentially an artifact of the way currently proof of work works and we are in the process of uh, gaining this uh, more and deeper understanding of how the parallelism of blocks in uh, in caspa have this seemingly very very nice and interesting effects about the dynamics of a fee market and in particular we learn that your network doesn't have to be extremely saturated it doesn't have to be con congested in order for fees to activate so I can list a lot of properties uh, of how fees work on Caspa and why they seem to have to behave much more nicely than on Bitcoin, but uh, it's kind of technical. Uh, I did go into that in the talk I gave today, and uh, you can also look up some post I wrote about it. Um, but this is one thing, that um, the dynamics of the fee market are healthier than in this chain world where either you are above some threshold by one Satoshi and you're in, or you're below it by one Satoshi and you're out which is kind of a terrible way to, to assign value to the quality of service you want to get. And the other thing, uh, I think one conception that people kind of need to grow up is the thought that the only source of security budget once the subsidies are gone are the, um, the fees. Because people have other incentives outside fees to pay for the security. Because say you are a large, large project 
that uses the CASPA as utility and your purpose is not to create a chip to, that people could, um, could trade and get the value this way. You want to create a token which has some other responsibility, which solves some external problem like uh, trading, uh, tokenizing any pre-existing market. You want the network you run over to be secure. It's part of your, um, the, the things you desire from the network. And this incentivizes you to contribute to the security, uh, security budget of the network in a way which is external to the fee market. And it's a crucial thing because if Casper really, the, the, the capacity of Casper becomes exploited well, and we see a lot of projects, real world projects, solving real world problems on this network, then these projects will contribute to the security budgets in ways other than fees, just because they want to be able to tell whoever uses their platform, we are running on a secure chain. It's their interest. You know, and, and Shai, you, you bring up a very interesting point. Um, you know, we know obviously you can't really do that with Bitcoin, right? Because it's too expensive. These ASICs are expensive. You have to have so much power. But with Caspa, and I remember seeing one of your posts on, on X, a $100 little mining rig, or I don't even know if you call it that, mm -hmm. but a $100, you can help secure the network of Caspa. And so the barrier to entry to get in to be able to secure the network uh, is a lot lower than other proof of work projects like Bitcoin. And so it's a very intriguing point you bring up because myself, you know, I'm not as smart as you are when it comes to things like this. So I think, okay, the only way that miners are going to be incentivized <clears throat> is through transaction fees, which leads to my next question. Well, if the fees are low, are they going to make enough money? But it's a very intriguing point you bring up. But you brought up the fact that, hey, like the fees are low because no one's really using it. Well, why would people start using it? Well, one of the reasons is the KRC token standards, right? Being able to launch projects and coins on Caspa. So I want to throw this out to, to Luke, Chad, and Wolfie. Wh what kind of progress are we seeing on the KRC and smart contracts and projects launching? Are you guys fielding any calls? Are you seeing anything on the back end that maybe the viewer watching can't see that people are just gearing up for, for the functionality to be able to launch on the project. And I'll kind of throw this out there. Anyone can just kind of jump in and, and give their thoughts. Sure. <clears throat> so uh, for starters, uh, it's important to, uh, to notate that uh, the Casplex uh, KRC20, um, that protocol is an outside entity. It's not a Caspa core product, meaning the core developers that created the Caspa node software and the protocol of GhostAg uh, are not uh, authoring the software for this. However, it is, uh, it's funded through the Caspa Ecosystem Foundation. So uh, there's some really sharp developers in Casplex. And um, it's basically a technology uh, which is similar to inscriptions on Bitcoin. So this allows the creation, it allows to do a smart contract like tricks uh, without the exact smart contract technology being implemented on the main network so far. This will let us uh, create um, tokens such as memes and stable coins. Uh, in addition, we have another one coming down the pipeline, which is called KRC721. That will be the NFT type of uh, type of tradable uh, digital asset that that people uh, that are very popular for the last couple of years. So um, yeah, those those open up a whole new uh, couple of use cases that will uh, bring new users we anticipate and new projects, meme projects are uh, stacking up and lining up to uh, create their their tokens on, on this when it goes live. Uh, we, it's been in closed beta for a few days or a few weeks, I'm sorry. Uh, and then in a few more days, we have the open beta. So these projects that are lined up and ready to create meme uh, tokens, such as one after Shai's cat, <laughs> Mr. Nacho Wyborski, there's going to be a, a cat, a cat uh, token on there. They'll, you know, uh, projects like that and probably if, uh, several others will do their little tests on the test network and make their tokens and see how they trade, interact, and the token generation um, process and so forth. So, uh, and then the open, you know, it should go to the main network, um, I would say in about, uh, you know, three or four weeks, maybe we would anticipate. Yeah, yeah uh, I just want to to frame this a little bit and um, to, put, to put things in the, what I think is the correct uh, perspective. KRC20 is not the solution to adoption. KRC20 is just the first um, project that is a, a, that goes beyond a uh, transactional layer. And we, uh, in future, I imagine 
We will have all sorts of projects. We will have um, roll-ups and we will have ZK chains. We will have uh, essentially everything people like. They can do it over Casper. KRC is just the first thing. And I, I really admire these guys. I liked it. They took a plunge and they um, decided to put so much effort into um, building over our chain and, and extending our functionality. Um, I think they will serve um, as a fun platform to do a lot of nice stuff, but also as like a proof of concept to see that Caspa is more than just digital silver. It's also digital silver, but it could be like the layer one that everything operates above. It's capacious enough to do that. And this is how I see the role of Casplex. It, it's going to start this uh, motion of doing more and more interesting stuff. And you already see discussions. Just uh, yesterday, uh, Yoni finally broke silence and started talking about how he envisions uh, not his design for smart contracts, which is still under work, but how he envisions doing uh, roll-ups and uh, ZK roll-ups over Caspa and how we think it should look like. And things are really starting to, to get going. Uh, I'm in touch behind the scenes uh, in, with some teams who wants to do similar stuff. Um, none of them have decided to go for it yet, but uh, discussions are happening. People who know how to do uh, layer twos are interested and are eyeing it and considering it. And I think KLC is just going to be the start of all the variety uh, of things you would see over Casper. So, uh, okay, let me ask you this question, Shai. So we know currently, and correct me if I'm wrong in any of this, but we're at one block per second for Casper. Mm -hmm. We're looking to get to 10 soon. I've seen 100. We've seen what happens with projects like Solana, where they get an influx of, of transactions and the network goes down. When we talk about, hey, the floodgates are going to open, and let's say projects start building, how much can Casper really scale? And can you foresee any, uh, like, can we get to that 10 or 100 blocks per second scale? Or even as is with an influx of projects and coins launching, you know, will the network get throttled or, or can it handle it at, at its current state? And how scalable can Casper really get? Uh, well, uh, people think that the purpose of increasing the block rates is increasing the throughput and pushing the envelope of the throughput as much as you possibly can. That's not the case. We want we have different motivations for uh, 10 blocks per second, for 100 blocks per second. Um, I would say that having a hundred, think about uh, having 10 blocks per second where each block can hold three, 300 transactions and compare it to 100 blocks per second where each block can uh, hold 30 transactions. Mm. In terms of throughput and in terms even of confirmation times, it's pretty much the same. There are other motivations, deeper and harder to explain motivations to, um, to having a large block rate, a, large, you know, a lot of blocks. And it, essentially, there are a lot of uh, interesting benefits of parallelism that we want to exploit to do stuff like improving the fee market and uh, combating MEV and uh, this kind of stuff. So this is the real motivation. So the question is not how much can Casper scale? The question is how much do we want to scale Casper? I want to scale it as much as reasonable, not as much as possible. Now, what you have to understand is that the reason Bitcoin can't scale uh, is because it harms the security. What we did in GhostDog, the, the huge innovation of GhostDog is that we removed the security from the equation. We created the same trade-off that you have in centralized distributed system. The trade-off is the you can increase the throughput as much as you want, but the price that you pay is that higher throughput requires better hardware. And we don't want to find ourselves in a situation like Solana where to hold the throughput you need to have validators that run on, how much does it cost to have a Solana validator? Like $15,000 or something like that. that. So we're in this unique and nice position where we can first decide what is the hardware limitation that we want for being a participating node. And then we will see how much we can scale the network within this perimeter. So we don't want to go over a hundred bucks for a node. And we can see on the testnet that we can hold 3,000 transactions very, very well 
on, on this hardware requirement. And we actually can go quite beyond. We never really push the envelope to see. But the ne- test net, we, we stressed, it, stressed it to more than uh, 3,000 transactions per second, build up huge, huge, huge queues in the mempools and things work out perfectly. It's been running for five months on 2,400 TPS, I think, and we don't see any problems. So I can tell you Casper can scale at least as much as that easily. Uh, can it scale beyond? Probably. Should it? We'll see. We just want to have the leeway to increase the throughput if the need arises. It's not a sport. It's not like higher throughput is better. We just want to make the point that we are able to increase the throughput if the need ever arises. And Shai, maybe maybe I missed the answer to this question, and I apologize if I did, but is there is there a disadvantage to, to scaling more than what you really need? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, if you scale too much, then first you harm the fee market because mm. there is no reason to pay fees when if you have a trillion transactions per second, then you don't have a fee market. Mm. And a fee market is important. And we want to uh, the, the network to be uh, calibrated to have nice uh, equilibria of the fee market. Where, like, If you see where the equilibria are, you see that the fees are uh, low enough to remain uh, accessible and usable and cheap, but high enough to actually generate revenue for miners. So it's like a sweet spot you can find. And we, our protocol is able to fine tune this kind of stuff. And another thing is, as I said, the, the more you scale, the, the higher the hardware requirements become and the, the more centralized the network become. That, that's, that's great, man. And thank you for that. Um, I want to, uh, I want to ask, Chad and Luke here, you know, staying on the topic of KRC, smart contract functionality, are you guys fielding any projects, any people, or any insight you can give us, maybe expectations of when this goes live? What kind of traffic are you expecting? And of course, we can't tell the future here, but what's kind of your your thoughts there? And, And I'll kind of throw it to you guys. I think one of the biggest indicators at the moment is on the test net. I think there's at least 200 tokens that are currently on there and they're obviously they're not launched yet, but it's a, it's a pretty, pretty cool looking thing to see that many uh, people queued up and ready to go. So that's a good starting indicator, I'd say. Yeah. There is also more than just meme coins and tokens. We're talking, yeah. you know, VPN projects, RWA, people talking about how they can utilize the Casper network. Yeah beyond just, you know, tokens and coins and using them within their infrastructure, within their, you know, accounting, within their, you know, eventually with contracts. So it's pretty exciting. You know, we can't say who for some of them, but even those that are kind of knocking at the door with the, with the KRC20, it's encouraging to see that it's not just, you know, meme coins 100% and that we're going to, and not against the meme coin, because I think it does provide a great kind of doorway and access to, you know, integration and the, and really it brings, you know, more developers into the ecosystem. So all this, it really opens the door to, to uh, expanding the ecosystem through, you know, developers, creative people, you know, business developers, connections to other projects. And, and that's just exciting. So we're, I think there's been a lot of um, developers that are just queuing up ready to, to, to get involved. Right. And they're thinking, yeah. how can we jump on board? Right. How can we get involved with our own sort of project, but we want to run it on Casper. And so with the, you know, very, very soon launch of the KRC 20 um, capability that just really, they're, they're ready. They're even, in there. They're even the, re- like the rust rewrite yeah. brought in, you know, it used to be a few devs, you know, working on the core. Mm-hmm. And then when Rust started a couple of years ago, I mean, it's been almost two years. Two years. Um, the expansion of the development team. And I, I have buddies that are they're developers. They're interested in Rust now because of what they've seen through through Caspa. So they're they're learning Rust so that they can jump into the, the ecosystem, whether it's through KRC20 or when smart contracts come out. So we're really opening up. The, the door just keeps opening wider for a whole pool of talent and people to come in the community to come in so that's 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 yeah, the beauty and the the rust uh, also it, it introduces this new api which makes doing stuff around casper and with casper so much easier mm-hmm. for example uh, there is the casper subreddit some guy just uh, one day said i created this uh, fun new casper arcade thing you just you pay uh, I think you pay one Casper and then you get like, uh, you could either win some or not. I don't remember the rules. But the point is that he created a very small, uh, nice app 
integrated with Caspa. And uh, I just thought that before Rust, it would have been so difficult to do this because we didn't have the appropriate APIs. And now I think uh, stuff that would have taken, require a lot of skill and effort are now, now became much more easier. And it encourages people in. Um, you know, we are in Vegas. So <laughs> in honor of the largest gambling town in the, uh, the United States, <laughs> um, we know uh, Shai's cat, right? Nacho, it's a token. We know Wolfie has, uh, I believe his avatar is his cat. So right. if you were a betting man <laughs> and let's say one of these cat coins gets to a billion dollar market cap, which one gets there first? Is it Shai's cat or, or Shai's, the Nacho? Right? Nacho? The yeah. Nacho? Chad? Nacho. Nacho? Sorry, sorry Wolfie. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you're Nacho too? <laughs> I can see. What about yeah. your cat, man? Oh, no. Yeah, he's uh, Johnson Jr. Weasel Johnson Jr. <laughs> he hasn't so, been tokenized uh, yet. Johnso is okay. not tokenized yet. Okay. Yeah. Not but yet. You, you, we can all, it's going to happen. Right. Yeah, well, you just, yeah, it's gonna you happen, just, whether you like it or not. You just not. gave his name, so it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. de up, up, definitely gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> interesting, uh, gentlemen. I do want to first of all, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, so happy that you guys, you know, we we were able to connect and bring you in the studio, and we're really happy to have this conversation and kind of grow our our relationship together with the rest of the Casper community. Um, I want to kind of leave it off with this. Any 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 alpha. That you guys can give us, and I see some smiles here. I know Shy. Uh, by the way, Shy, great dance moves on the show yesterday. That's <laughs> going well. and great finger tornado too. If you don't know what I'm talking about? Go watch our live show from yesterday or from a few days ago. But any alpha that you guys want to give to the Caspa community, because you know they watch these videos on YouTube all day long, looking for information. And so, any any little nuggets or breadcrumbs you can drop at the doorstep here. I think the smile you're saying is the smile of uh, discreetness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can't name names. We can't be explicit. Um, but uh, I think we will all agree that some very interesting big players, uh, several of them from several different walks of life, either from inside or from outside the crypto world, um, they are eyeing us and they are in contact mm -hmm. with us and they have some big plans. And even if only a few of them follow through, it would be huge for Casper. Yeah. And I'm assuming you can't say the name. No, no, definitely not. We're in we're in rooms with some of them, and and, and yeah. that's mm -hmm. it's been beneficial to be there at Vegas to you know the last couple of days. There may have been some some great conversations that are happening. So absolutely, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I I started with Caspa not not as uh, long ago as, as Shy obviously, but uh, I was I was there uh, on the main network when it was two weeks old. So uh, in the first. You know, I'd say the first the first two years, it was just the community. It was literally, uh, you know, solitary human beings, pers personal. It was driven by personal, you know, uh, volunteers and fans and, and holders and miners. Uh, and now in the, just this year, we've seen, um, you know, uh, enterprises, institutions and large, large entities uh, from around the world uh, beginning to express interest and let us know in their own way they're. They, they either, you know, they anticipate to participate or they are currently participating uh, in some form or interacting with the CASPA network. So uh, that's great. Uh, even the CASPA Ecosystem Foundation is, is a good example of that. Um, that's, that's funded by some, you know, decently sized, uh, you know, enterprises from over in the Asian uh, area. And, uh, you know, to, to have them, uh, you know, uh, them and and Bitmain paid for uh, the the hotels here, you know. So to have to have enterprise uh, also contributing to raise up Caspa, mm -hmm. not only just people, individuals uh, is is a great you know next step for the project. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I'll and I'll kind of wrap it up with this. But um, if you're part of the Caspa community, which if you're watching, I'm assuming you are, um, you guys are very lucky because you have some great people that are going out there they're spreading the word of the project you have people like shy here uh who are so um they're so kind with their time and going on podcasts and doing interviews and giving keynote speeches and we're really talking about the the benefit of what caspa is doing and how it's unique and then you have people like luke chad and wolfie who on their own accord on their own dime several times not getting paid but going out there and they're and they're locking up deals. They're answering questions. They're also going on podcasts, and and all because they want to see the project succeed, not because they're getting paid some monetary amount. And so, um, if you're part of the Casper community, consider yourself very lucky because 
For every one project like CASPA, there is thousands, even tens of thousands of projects that launch, get your money, and then they're like, well, it didn't work out. Or, uh, hey, yeah, it's bad market conditions. These guys have been at it. And so I myself am part of the CASPA community. I hold the token myself. And so it's just very exciting to see uh, intelligent, smart, good people come together. I know yesterday, Wolfie and Shy, it was the first time you guys ever met each other. Correct. And you guys have both been around for a very long time. So it's very unique. And when I think about the ethos of crypto, um, these are things that I think about coming together, working together, making something from scratch great and making it even better. And it takes time. It takes effort. It takes great people like these people that you're seeing on your screen today. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you for your time. You are always welcome here at Sin City Crypto. And for those of you watching, support the people that are out there that are that are waving the CASPA flag, that are spreading the word, um, because we know it's benefiting the entire ecosystem, the project, the protocol, everything at the layer. And so we're excited to see what CASPA does in the future mm -hmm. and to see what uh, you know where we're going to be one year from now. Maybe we'll have a year from now sit down again take a look back at where we were and where we are into the future. And so we're excited for the project. If you're excited about CASPA, drop a like, let us know in the comment section. Uh, what was your favorite part of this exclusive sit down interview with these four amazing gentlemen? With that being said, guys, thank you so much again. And we look forward to doing this again in the future. Uh, thanks thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.